working with me, Ola Kosman from ITF, thinking about uh, good faith people in the AI. Thank you. So, um, thanks you for the introduction. My name is Roland Krause. I work for Integrated Computer Solutions. Uh, we're a US-based company specializing in support and development and design of user experiences and user interfaces. We are the North American QT experts and as a engineering manager at ICS, <coughs> I'm very privileged to work with some of the best engineers that in the QT ecosystem, one of which is Igor Grifko, who helped a great deal uh, in support of this uh, in support of this project. He's he's one of my team members and friends, and and meant much of this uh, stuff that I'm presenting today was developed by him over the course of the last year. Of course, Jeff Trenter, my colleague from uh, ICS, also has helped a great deal with this presentation. Um, this morning's keynotes were really interesting, and I learned a great deal about uh, how alive and well QT is and the, the ecosystem is. I learned from uh, the first speaker one important thing. I thought about it already, but he said, the world is connected. And what does that mean for us QT developer? Well, for one, we are connected with each other that we know. But uh, the people that use our applications are connected, want to be connected, and simply if you don't provide in your applications for connection, then, then there is a gap. The second thing that the first speaker mentioned is something that at QT conferences haven't heard in a while, especially many of us are open source developers. He speaks about business architecture. In a sense, what uh, QT as the QT project has provided in the past was an open source architecture. The open source architecture then became a business architecture over the past years when Nokia took this, uh, the, this platform essentially and, and retargeted it towards their purpose, which is, you know, which was their right and, and, and we uh, had a lot of benefits from that. But what does it also mean is that um, business architecture in, in all senses, again, uh, results in c the, the, the need to fulfill connection. So in a sense, connecting your technologies is what this talk is all about. Connecting your technologies, connecting your technologies with other people's technologies. One of the big technologies that we are all dealing with on a daily basis, and it's literally the 500 billion dollar gorilla in the room is Google. And uh, so this talk uh, uh, is concerned with how we interface the Google APIs uh, with Qt. And this is one proposal how to do that. Uh, our goal that we set out is to interface Google services so that we can help our developers um, um, write applications more easily. Now, Google offers a variety of APIs, and they're mostly aimed at web developers. So much of the technology um, does not integrate as easily as we could wish. However, um, being C++ developers, being very familiar with RESTful API, and being able to take advantage of the, the, the foundation that Qt already provides with uh, Qt network management and, and, uh, and all these classes that we can use to connect to, to web-based services, we um, designed and wrote an API. So um, the Google API consists largely of uh, specialized web services and some programs that al allows internet application developers to find and manipulate information on the web. So it's close to Google's core mission of being you know, a search engine, but um, with being a search engine, Google is also a, a dominantly a advertisement broker. So of course, those APIs can and will be used by many to add value to their own applications. And they, they provide a great deal of features uh, that we can benefit from. So in a sense, what we do here is we use the SOAP and WSDL standards to act as an interface between the user's programs and Google services. 
Now, what we have developed is compatible with other programming environments, such as pure C++, Java, Perl, .NET, other technologies that you already know here. So what do we do? The idea is that the developers can write applications that can connect remotely to Google's services using Qt's library. Data communications, they are uh, executed with the SOAP protocol, the Simple Object Access Protocol. So that's a XML-based technology. It is used to exchange information that is entered into web applications. Now, developers can initiate it this way, uh, search requests against Google's index, and then receive the results as structured data. For example, the estimated number of results, URLs, snipples, query times, all sorts of things. They can also access the information in the Google cache or, for example, check the spelling of words. So um, ICS has developed and published about 18 Qt and QML-based clients for popular Google APIs. There's a wide variety of them. We picked a couple of them, started working on it, went on to the next one, went on to the next one. What our goal was when we set out to do this uh, was to be able to easily integrate Google service functionality into your Qt-based programs, into your Qt-based applications. So for most of these APIs, we provide both um, C++, which I actually should probably mean QWidget base uh, and QML clients. So yeah, the QML stuff is, is currently still targeted at what once was known as Migo and Symbian platforms. Many of you will remember those, even though those might be things of the past pretty soon. Um, they are open source. They're hosted at Google at code.google.com. So you, that's where you can find these. Now, I'll give you a quick overview of which uh, APIs are actually supported. And this is just this is the start of the list. Google Books, Tasks, Maps, Latitude, Blogger, Calendar, and Drive. These are all things that you are probably familiar with. Latitude is uh, maybe the only one that is not so current. It, it tracks your location. It's a location tracker, uh, breadcrumbs. Now, uh, Google Freebase is an information database uh, similar to what Wikipedia is. Places Plus, I think Places is going to be de uh, deprecated soon. Shopping. Um, the one thing that is really the foundation for many Google services, the OAuth uh, libraries. Google provides OAuth uh, authentication services, and that uh, um, is the first thing that one wants to look at and one wants to download when you when you uh, and install before you use our other ones, because much of our other programs will take care of, uh, will take advantage of that. So. Let's go and look a little bit into detail in detail at some of these, right? Um, Google Books, we provided an IP, um, uh, programs with uh, uh, QWidget and QML-based clients that use that Google Books API. For those of you that are not that familiar with Google Books, it is Google's effort to make the book content available on the web and discoverable. So Google set out at some point and said they wanted to scan all the books in all the libraries. And being Google, they said, yeah, we're just going to scan the whole world, of course, and uh, make that available, indexable, searchable. And this uh, API here um, allows you to take advantage of that, of those search queries. You can integrate this repository, including the search results that you get from it and the social features that you get from it into your own application. So you can also embed book previews. So this code is hosted at QML Google Books and Qt Google Books on codegoogle.com. And uh, uh, if you don't want to write down these URLs, uh, you're most welcome to stop by at our booth later on I at ICS's booth in the exhibitor zone. And, and we'll write this down, or we'll give you the links, or send them to you by email. And you can probably Google for them, too. So I'll give you a quick example how it looks like. The Google Books desktop um, is a is a you know QWidget based application. It's you know nothing overly fancy. It demonstrates the purpose of this. So it is really done as to show how the API is supposed to be used. And this is not supposed to be a full featured application that you know blows you away, but it's supposed to show you how you can use this. And uh, Igor, if you, you th we have this demo running for the books right here on here. So, would you 
since this is your computer, I'll let you I'll let you bring up this in the bring this up into the foreground. What you can do here is with this application is oh, can you <laughs> you just hmm? did you Okay, you want me to continue first and then go through the examples all together in the end? Well, we have two of these. You know, the th the second thing, and I'm I'm willing to just send this through the rows here. Um, maybe that's what we're going to do. Is a QML client that runs on on one of those Nokia phones um, that we all thought um, would at some point take over the world, and they didn't. <laughs> But maybe we'll just pass this through. Maybe we'll just pass this through for you guys to play with. You will have to go with that, Igor. So again, this is similar. This is what we're showing here. It's a very simple, simple client. It shows you how this how this all works. You know, similar to this, the next feature that we have, and that it might be implement uh, in interesting for people, is the uh, Google Tasks API. There again, we've implemented C++ or QWidget based and QML clients. And, and, and the API provides the developers with a set of, of possibilities of functionality for searching, reading, and updating Google Tasks content, which is essentially to-do lists. So these things are hosted at the similar location. There is a, another screenshot of the desktop version of the QWidgets-based desktop versions of this application here, and you can see how you can um, just take notes store them online. The nice thing is this is, f you know, fully, you can integrate this into your own Qt-based applications. You get a to-do list background, uh, back end with this. Again, here we did a uh, Symbian client for this, for the Nokia N8, and this is a, a little while ago, and you can see how this looks like. Similar, similar situation as what we had before. Google Maps is a is a even a more in um, interesting um, client. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned today is that we might see support for Qt on the iPhone, which unfortunately lost the capabilities <laughs> in iPhone 5 to display Google Maps. When so I can see myself, the first thing I would want to do. Let's put the Google Maps back on the iPhone 5 because the one that Apple has currently, well, they suck. And so, <laughs> and the one, the Google Maps are actually the best mapping solution there is. But um, you can also use Google Maps in your own application, in your own Qt-based application. I think that's a, a great deal of an advantage for many things. So uh, it in includes uh, the features, uh, you know, street read, it actually includes the street view uh, feature, right? Because uh, these Google, our Google Map implementation is, to some extent, web-based. Uses web view. Yeah. So, give you a quick, you know, a view of the desktop application. There's nothing uh, what you would have not expected here. It looks very similar to what you would find in a in a web browser. And essentially, it's the same thing. But it also works on the Nokia N9. So the N9. Did you send that to the to the, you know, it actually, yeah, it actually has an implementation um, of it, and it works. Um, Latitude is a real in, in interesting um, uh, feature. Uh, you can get, um, you can update and, and read your current loca location, essentially, with that. You can build applications with that, that, for example, tr track um, hikes. Say you go on a hike, you can build an application very easily that tracks all the points that you walked. You can upload that to the Google database. You can share that with other people. So it's very easy, imaginable that you are making a application for a mobile device with Google Latitude um, that allows you to share with other people hiking roads or running paths if you're a jogger or ski slopes if you're a skier. Uh, I think that's a very interesting feature that is already widely used by a whole bunch of other applications that you can tap into with your own application. So, in its simplest form, and uh, you know, simplicity is always the the rule when you make a demo. Uh, it can look like this: you simply have a list of points, breadcrumbs that you've that you've visited. 
the history, location, latitude, longitude is given there with the time. So that's what you want to do, and you can use Google Maps. You can combine that with Google Maps very easily. You can imagine how you can very quickly um, have a trace. You can retrace your steps. You can write your own version of Foursquare with that, too. Now, then, obviously, what you can do, you can go ahead and blog about the whole thing. So you can uh, put your integrated uh, version of that breadcrumb path that you just created with the maps together into Google Blogger, which is the next set of APIs that, we pr that this provides. So this is a C++-based uh, client that uses the Blogger API. This is a little bit of how it, this looks like. I have really no idea what it says. Um, right, I already have been informed by Igor that I really need to. Yes, you can you play YouTube videos from right from within here. So that's an important feature of blogging that you have YouTube videos in your blogs, right? <laughs> of course. I think a little bit more, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but <laughs> I'm more interested in things like the stupid, boring things like the calendar API so that I can keep track of, of things. And I thought that, you know, many, many times, especially on, on some mobile devices, don't always have the best integration. And so here it is. Here you can actually uh, write your own um, uh, feature, your own integration. Um, you know, f for a long time I used uh, KDE's calendar and, and uh, the PIM services. I do not know, I haven't done this in a while, but I don't know whether they integrate, uh, how they integrate with the Google Calendar features these days. I would like to find out whether this is something that can be of use there at KDE. Nothing more than that. So this would be a, a very easy possibility. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm glad to hear that. So. Well, another thing that is uh, of of much of importance to me, and to a lot of people that I work with, uh, is Google Drive. Google Drive is something that has become sort of the center of the workflow of a distributed organization. We, as a company, are, are you know, spread out. We are 24 hours around the globe. We've got developers in, in nearly every time zone these days. And one of the principal ways that we communicate with each other or work with each other is on Google Documents, because you can actually work with someone who's 3,000 miles away, um, you know, simultaneously typing into Google Documents. I've I've actually communicated through these things. Now, you can build application for this. The Google Drive let gives you access to the Google Document API. So you can open, you can save, you can share files, you can create files. It's a simple, a very simple, um, uh, you know, you can l look at it like a file manager. You can write a, a Google Drive-based file manager that lets you drag and drop files from your de desktop to your Google Drive and back. There's a screenshot of that. And uh, um, I find that pretty intriguing, especially since it just makes it, uh, it's, it's very uncomplicated to share large files with people. You don't have to get an account. Um, well, you obviously, you have to have a Google account. So both people have to have a Google account. But then it's a, it's a seamless operation between your desktop and Google and someone else's desktop. Google Freebase is a knowledge base that reminds me much of Wikipedia. Um, I think it's a knockoff on, Wik on Wikipedia. So I, I'm not really 100% sure where Google is going with this. However, we have an API to it. And uh, it, it's a, it, I think what it is is uh, Google harvests data and information and, 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 and preps it up into something so that it is supposed to be more than Wikipedia. It, it collects information from more than just the Wikipedia source. So our Freebase APIs then can be used to access and update the structured data. So you can also actually update it through this, this API. Um, simple example here is an article about uh, Adventureland, which is one of Disney's uh, feature lands here. Um, 
shows you here how this uh, information can be presented, for example. And you can search for it. You can, you can uh, in, in many ways, and then categorize your results. So places gives you um, essentially information about things that are around you. Google Places will tell you uh, by a geolocation where the next Starbucks is. And, uh, you know, if you're in Berlin, you will find out where the next Currywurststand is. Something, things that you need to, li to live. So um, that uh, you can very quickly see how you can, again, combine this with all the other APIs here to, to write pretty interesting applications with it. So Google Places will actually show a view um, of where you are, a map view again, and then you could, for example, say, show me all, um, you know, hmm? show me all bookstores. Well, Igor, you go looking for bookstores. I go looking for curly voice, so that's how it is. Now, Google Plus is Google's answer to Facebook. <laughs> and... Uh, Again, there is a C++ client or a widget client uh, that uses the API. And uh, you can use that to integrate your application with Google+. Now, Google+, really is gaining momentum pretty quickly in, in places where I live because uh, it, you know, it turns out that it, it seems to be a little more controllable than Facebook is. So lots of parents will let their kids go on Google+, and restrict their circles pretty tightly and are more comfortable with that than you them using Facebook. So it does actually gain momentum. Um, it's not a complete moot attempt to derail fa Facebook. <laughs> so um, I think these APIs are very relevant then in, the, in this context. So it lets you uh, see certain things, lets you see, um, you know, um, well, who you're connected with on Google Plus, essentially. So this is our Google Plus client here. Google Shopping, nothing goes without shopping. So, again, this comes back to the fact, you know, there's also business in business architecture. While many of us um, have ties to the open source community, that doesn't mean that, you know, many of us also can't make a few bucks on the site or, you know, are not interested in making money. So it's a good, good thing to have an API that allows you to do that allows you to type into that. So um, essentially what this does here, it shows you a list of things um, that you could search for on in the Google Shopping API. But you know, this is very shallow um, compared to what you can do with the Google Shopping API and which depth you can go. And now you can build applications that get the prices from the Google Shopping API. You can do you can put all your or your skills in in writing um, numerical algorithms that compare prices, that that do optimizations, that combine this with location to make very interesting applications with this. So, so I think the power of of Qt, the power of Qt and C++ in the back end combined with this, this is th that this is a great asset um, to have. The basic foundation, as I already said, and this should have come actually as the first slide, but it's the most boring thing about it. But it's also one of the more technically more challenging thing is the is the uh, the wrangling of the OAuth uh, authentication authentication scheme that Google has. So, so here we have a library. Uh, we've made a library that uh, is written against the OAuth 2.0 Google API, and uh, it lets you authenticate against Google's OAuth services. Uh, many places on the web, Facebook also provides OAuth authentication services. That's um, Yahoo does it too. So there's this the the holy grail of single uh, sign-on on the web um, is implemented with that. And obviously there's at least three providers. There's probably more. So single sign-on with OAuth is an oxymoron actually, <laughs> but it works. Then things like BigQuery. BigQuery's uh, Google Database API, where you uh, get to play with the with the big data sets, with the big stuff. So you can have uh, an ASF of very massive data sets here uh, available that Google provides you, so you can play with some of Google's large amount of data. So um, 
uh, there's an example client here of BigQuery and you can see how you can um, uh, request query data, how you can filter it down, how you can sort it. Um, you can see some of the select commands here, the, the select commands. So, so BigQuery is, is, is similar to, to SQL Query, but it's not the exact same syntax actually. Google prediction is an interesting thing if you um, want to do command line completion in terms in your in your own programs in terms of you know what a person is searching for what other people are searching for what's commonly searched for such things um, can be achieved by using the Google prediction API so you can have Qt applications take advantage of that when they're online so be something that is very interesting for for many people there nowadays people are used to having their answers predicted when you have to actually type something so that's a feature that many people ex nowadays um, expect from their user experience so we made a little bit of a demo application here that shows that how that is done So let's summarize a little bit. You get started by going to code.google.com. There are uh, some things that you have to have. At the point where we wrote this, um, QJSON was the JSON library of choice. I now heard there's Lars JSON coming in Qt5, so I'm very much looking forward to that, so that Qt will have its own JSON implementation in Qt5. Because uh, you know everybody has done a little bit by themselves, and it'd be really great to standardize that and just get rid of all the other libraries and not have to worry about where package config is for QJSON when you build it, right? We tried this this morning at breakfast and we failed. So, <laughs> um, so each project has its own wiki, has an issue tracker. We invite everybody who is interested in this to participate, to contact us, to to help us with this. The applications are all tested. They work on Windows, on Linux, on Mac OS. They, we tried them on Symbian. Some of them tried them on Mego. We tried them. And, um, you know, we have a great deal of experience with actually running uh, Qt applications on Android, too. So we, we probably, you know, can make that happen. And so, so, so please come and help us and, and, and help us to make this better and contribute to it. So at that some point that maybe we're going to just move this into the add-ons and see, you know, that in a year or so we can see all these things in Qt add-ons eventually. So um, the thing is, some of these things have obviously the need to have a Google account and secrets. So you need to actually um, have those secrets. Obviously, well, you know, Igor refused to give me his credit cards and leave that in the application. Otherwise, I would have a great deal of fun with shopping. And uh, so we removed all the application secrets from the code here that we have. Um, so, you know, you have to download the code and then insert your application secrets. But that process is documented, right? So you need to go through the step of registering a Google application and modify the code appro uh, appropriately. So for yeah, for prediction and BigQuery, since uh, this, these are things that you potentially can make actual real hard money with, you really may want to, you know, you, they, Google wants you to add some billing to your account so that they can bill you for it. So not all of these services are free, right? Um, actually, Google is not generally given things away that are valuable. So once you, once you tap into that, you might actually find yourself that you have to pay for certain things from Google. So there are uh, a couple of demos we have demos we have here. Why don't why don't you help me with those demos, Igor? So so since it's your computer, and yeah, just just bring up what we have here, and then we explain a little bit what these things do. There are live demos, which is always fun. So we see whether we find any of them. So this is an example of the Freebase uh, client that we wrote. So Again, a widget-based client. Oh, there it goes. Okay. It shows you information about movies, directors. Um, it all comes from Google's database, all the stuff that you can get. And then it's your turn to present it in an interesting form. 
using all what Q QT and QWidget is going to give you for that. But all that information is available upon upon a request here using the API. Right, it, it's a tree-based information structure that you can get. So you can get a tree model back of that, and then it's your your choice how you actually how you actually view the data. So one more is uh, I think Google Earth, right? So the the last demo that we're going to show today is a Google Earth client. So the 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 unfortunate thing about the Earth client is that it will only run in Windows. And I think on the Mac, because uh, Google does not, um, there's there's some uh, shared libraries that Google will actually let you download and are needed for this that are not available for, for Linux. So um, on the other hand, uh, you know, some of the stuff I think is simply they've never tried it. It just isn't supported. They, they just never could, could make it. So maybe if you, yeah, you can go to a certain location here. Maybe zoom out a little bit and make this thing larger so that one can see it a little bit better. Work. So this is this is an application that requires network connection, of course, and it's quite possible. What I think is happening here is that the network is is not responsive to it. So this is actually based on a web view here, um, and so it so it takes a little while to update. So I don't know why why it is. No, it is not. It does not. It is. It works when you have a very good network connection. That's when it works really well. <laughs> this, well, you know, we're at a conference, so you know, it's well glad to have any internet right, right at all. So, <laughs> okay. Well, that's about it for the Google API. Um, future work is is largely going to focus on making this a you know making this more available we integrate it into some of our products into some of our um, things that we show as as demos um, in the in the next coming weeks we're working on that um, and uh, we would like to you know contribute this or have contributed this in in some form where currently talking about uh, making this changing the license again so that it we can become published under the LGPL, which would allow it to go into the QT add-ons. Currently, it's published under the GPL license, and since it, you know, since the IP is, uh, yeah, we've had in the past had a s some reservations against contributing uh, directly to QT when it was owned by Nokia, and we would wouldn't really have much influence on it. Um, but I think the reservations are largely gone after the DJI acquisition, which we look at favorably and so I think we we can come to a very good way of collaborating and then contributing this stuff to the community better. I mean for open source applications the GPL is perfect license but if you really do want to have do some more you know if you want to do some things that are where you want to mix in your secret sauce your own especially when you go look at things like the prediction API or you find the the shopping API you can do very interesting business related things with that very easily and QT gives you a perfect very solid, very strong C++ backend to write such applications very intelligently. So this is a great add-on to it. It hopefully opens up um, Qt to a whole bunch more people that want to use it. I think that's a great way of extending Qt's functionality. And with that, uh, we say th thank you for your uh, attention. If you have any questions, uh, we'll be here for, for that now. <laughs>